State by state, city by city, there is a real criminal justice reform happening. But there's an important question here. What about the souls already inside our terrible system? Of course, we're all celebrating criminal justice reform. But one of the consequences is going to be an incredible number of people being released from prison without the tools they need to live on the outside. We can't just let people out and hope for the best. We have to bring people home. That takes time, it takes care, and of course, it takes work. Growing up as a kid, I experienced a lot of the downside of certain low-income areas. There was gang violence and school fights. Everybody represented each other with colors. And around that time, I was hanging out with the neighborhood kids. And first time I've ever been judged being a young African-American Hispanic descent, they thought we burglarized something and we were just young kids hanging out in the neighborhood. And that gave me my first taste of jail. At two years old, my mother abandoned me and my father. And then I was shipped off to Florida to live with my godmother. At nine years old, my father called and, you know, said he was ready to raise me. So, yeah, I came back to New York and shortly after he became abusive. I had a scholarship to go to college for football and baseball, but I was scared to leave the hood. Scared, because I had no male to tell me it's all right, you can go away, grow up. That, that didn't happen for me. After I left college, I started selling drugs and became my own best customer, which led me to do about seven years of incarceration. I have a set of twins, two boys, that witnessed my struggle and being in and out of their life for long stretches of time because of the incarceration and the battles with drugs. When I went to jail, my son was eight, nine years old. And by being incarcerated, he started selling drugs. When I came home after doing 25 years, he's in jail. He got 20 life. The painful part was my family. I told them never to visit me. I just had to pay that debt and get out of there. My biggest fear you know, was dying in prison. So many people don't make it. And coming out, that was still my fear. Coming from prison, it was pretty harsh. Like Being the only man and growing up around five sisters, I felt like I was supposed to support them throughout their life, and I wasn't. So that I felt a whole like disappointment, shame. I came to a point in my time, like, is this life now? And realized I have to set my own destiny. Hey, Brian, good afternoon, hey, yo, man. Hey, man. I see I'm still on for tomorrow night yeah, and Saturday night. Yeah, still for tomorrow, Saturday. Upon my release, I went to the shelter system, and the first day, they brought up the dope fund, and within two weeks, I was walking through the doors at 89 Porter Avenue. They came through a system that was set up for them to fail. Racism, mass incarceration, these are systems that produce the men that we serve. What we do as an organization is help people break cycles of Poverty, homelessness, drug addiction, and criminal recidivism. You gotta be interested in one of the occupational trainings, right? Absolutely. What are you interested in? One of the first obstacles that, that men face when they get out is getting a job. And we provide that opportunity. It was a good transition for me because this is a work environment here. A good place to start all over. When I first walked in and saw the atmosphere, I was pleased by it. What they offered me was a bridge back to life. I mostly focused on the culinary program, working in the kitchen, learning how to cook. The computer class was a mandatory class, and being that I did pretty well, I was given a variety of courses to take. You at the point where you have 11 months in the program, so how's that going for you? I just finished up the building maintenance course. I'm certified, so now I'm going in with the confidence. I'm grateful I got worth, I got value now. Three months at the dope fund, I've been able to save some money, open up a bank account, and I've never had $1,000 saved. And I'm over $1,500 now in less than three months. And we're off to Fulton Mall. 
I know basically all the trainees that's out there. Conversate with them, try to encourage them. Yo, I see you. You have a good day, all right? It's a starting block. That's how I started, pushing the bucket. Then from there, I became a trainee driver. I have a permanent job. I'm a hard worker, I'm dedicated, and them giving me an opportunity has helped me gain confidence in myself. Coming home from jail and getting in here has definitely changed my life around. 180 degrees. My kids are proud of me. You know, I see when I come and see them on the weekend, they stop me right at the door and hug me. <laughs> What's up, big boy? How you doing? How was school? It's a beautiful thing. Even at 51, I'm not too old, you know, to change and, and, and uh, make things better in my life. And the Dauphin has given me that opportunity. Hey, yo, yo. Hey. How you doing, sis? I built up the courage to reach out to my sisters. I talk to them on a weekly basis now, and I'm grateful that the Dauphin allowed me to get that kind of communication because they pushed me to that. Yo, it's such a good feeling to be able to talk to you, sis. I've always heard from you no matter what. You know, you could just call or text on here. I'm happy now more than I've ever been in my life. Okay, on the weekends I get my grandson. I have to spend time with him so he won't follow in his fo father's footsteps like my son followed in mine. So right now I feel as though this is my job to break that cycle. Once a year, we all get together and celebrate the graduation of these men, the men in blue. And for men who have not been celebrated much, this is very important. Here you see this person that came to you homeless or coming out of prison, and they're in a position of power. They're in a position to do something for themselves, for their children, for their communities. When we teach a man how to become self-sufficient, what we're doing is we're breaking the cycle of poverty and incarceration. For individuals that serve a prison term, two-thirds of them recidivate within three years. We reduce that rate by 62%. We've helped tens of thousands of men come home and stay home. Men who contribute to society, who have discovered the dignity within themselves. That's the best of America. It's written into the lives of every man we serve. The true greatness of our country is within every man in Ready, Willing, and Able.